us go to God in prayer. Father God, we're so thankful this morning for you allowing us, Father, to be in your presence, not just at the building, God, but even in our homes. Father, and some of us may be on the road this morning to or from work, but God, we're certainly just grateful for you giving us the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we certainly say thank you for revealing yourself, uh, not just to your children, Father, but also to this land and country. Father, we thank you for revealing not just yourself, but God, your power in that we cannot limit you to our standards, nor can we place you in the box of our limitations, but God, you supersede all humanity. And for that, God, we say thank you on this morning. Father, we pray for those who may have been affected by the virus, Father, we ask that you would touch their hearts, touch their bodies, Father, but most importantly, touch their souls. God, we thank you for allowing us to, to just be able to worship, Father, you in spirit and in truth. God, now we ask you to forgive us of our sins. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Now I want to want our minds to go back to Calvary in that <clears throat> Jesus a man who knew no sin became sin so that we would have a right to the tree of life. We want to take this time out to partake in the bread and the juice, which is a symbol of the Lord's broken body and the Lord's shed blood. This is an opportunity for us to let our minds go back, not just to Calvary, but let our minds go back to when we first gave our life to the Lord and we came into a covenant relationship <clears throat> with God. Let us remember that he did not have to do it, but he did it anyway. Why did he go to a cross to die for us? He went to the cross to die for us because God loves his creation. The Bible says in John 3 chapter 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For the children of God on this morning who are worshiping God in spirit and in truth, this moment right here is for you in that you should remember what the Lord did for you at Calvary. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much once again, God, for your redemption. We thank you, God, for your reconciliation. God, we thank you so much for your love and compassion, not just for your church, God, but for all humanity. But God, we certainly say thank you for offering us this covenant relationship through Christ Jesus. God, we thank you for his broken body, and we thank you for his shed blood. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. There are seven ways um, for you to give. You can uh, give through Cash App, uh, C-H-C-O-C uh, 20, and also you can give through Givelify, just search College Heights uh, Church of Christ. This is an opportunity for you to give, and if you don't have those online services and you don't have Cash App, you can always uh, come by the building, drop your offering uh, off at the building Friday and Saturday, Friday from 10 o'clock until uh, 3 o'clock and also Saturday from 10 to 1. But if you cannot make it out to the building, we will certainly come and pick up your offering and also drop off uh, your communion cups. Thank God. There are some things Real, or I can't 
Yeah. 
you get your Bibles real quick and go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And I want to look at the first two verses on this morning. John chapter 15, uh, verses 1 and verse number verse number 2. John chapter 15, uh, verses number 1 and verse uh, number 2. Jesus says here to his disciples <clears throat> that I am the true vine. And my father is the divine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. I want to lift the subject from this particular passage. Being productive through this pandemic. Being productive in this uh, pandemic. Y'all help me sing just a, another verse of this little song right here, and then I'm gonna get out your way. Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, how I love, how I love to call your sweet Jesus, Jesus, nobody but Jesus, Jesus, every day. because of complacency but use these moments to grow and develop in your relationship with God and reinforce strong and strengthen relationships for your family and I need for you to know this morning that it is important for us to be reminded of how important family is and I'm glad that we are going through this uh, in the sense that we have an opportunity for families to grow closer together. We have opportunities for us to get closer to God. We have opportunities for us to be in isolation so God can use us. So that after this is over, God can use you for more than what he was using you before. And so in these moments like this, God is not just expecting us to sit by the side and just live our lives and just go through the motions through these moments. God is expecting us to be productive and in order for us to be productive there has to be some pain and suffering. I need to tell you this morning that in order for us to grow and develop, in order for us uh -huh, to be productive, in order for us to grow, to go to greater heights, 
we must go through a process that is painful and it causes us to suffer just a little bit. But what I love about this thing is that after the pain is over, after the suffering is over, there is a blessing on the other side. God says that I got to take you through the process of pain. I got to take you through the process of suffering. I got to take you through the process of sickness so that you can become more productive. God is expecting every child of God to be productive and produce more fruit. I know you can't go to work right now. I know you can't get all, you don't have all the money that you need, but I stopped by to tell somebody who's watching me this morning that God is expecting you not to be productive in physical things, but to be productive in spiritual things. God says that in order for you to be productive, I gotta put you through some stuff. And so here it is on this morning. Let me hurry and move on. Here it is this morning. He, he, he shows us in our particular text this morning, uh, uh, in chapter 15 of John, this process of production. And so let me give you this background real quick, and then I'm hit the runway we're going. From chapter 13 to chapter 17, Jesus is devoting himself to his own disciples. He, he's preparing them. Uh, for that, the, the day that would change everything. And that day uh, is the day that he was crucified. The crucifixion is one day away. Matter of fact, this is the day before the, cruci the crucifixion. And Christ was focused more on his private ministry. And so in the immediate context, Jesus is fixing to experience arrest, crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. So he spends time with those who received him to communicate his coming legacy as Lord and Savior. He also is helping the disciples understand that their world, that were, that were, their world uh -huh, was about to shatter because Jesus was leaving. They would be confused and filled with anxiety because of the events that would soon take place. But Jesus spoke to them and comforted them and he told them that I'm leaving my spirit behind. So Jesus in chapter 15, through an extended metaphor of the vine and branches, set forth the basis for Christian living. I need for us to know that if you are a child of God and if you are a Christian, you will experience pain and persecution. But after this is over, God says that I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to make you better. So when the next storm hits your house, you don't fall. When the next storm hits your life, you don't be and you don't break. All you do is be it. What God is saying that I got to take you through it in order for you to get to it. So here it is. He uses four allegorical elements in this particular passage. The first allegorical element is a vine. The second is the vine dresser. The third is the branches, and the fourth is fruit. So here it is, if we're going to be productive, and if we are going to produce fruit in times such as this, the first thing we got to do is that we got to know who the source is. Not just knowing the source, because you can't be connected to who you don't know. And this is a word for you families that's sitting at home, uh, really just separated from each other. I challenge you to get to know one another because I can't make a connection with you if I don't know who you are. That's the reason why people have been, uh, their world has been shattered because we can't come to the building because they don't know the source. But when you know the source, the, the, the God goes with me everywhere. I go, matter of fact, we used to sing the song in church, you ought to take the Lord with you wherever you go. And so in order for you to be productive, you got to know the source of production. And when you know the source of production, you got to stay connected to the source. He says that I am, verse number one, he says that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. He says that I am the true vine. In the Old Testament, vine is a common symbol of Israel, the covenant people of God. Now what is interesting about it its use is every time that this particular symbol was used of the historic children of Israel, it's the vine's failure to produce fruit. So in contrast to such failure, Jesus says that I am the true vine. I am the originator of all vines. The vines of old pointed to me, the true vine, though, though the children of Israel was not productive, though uh -huh, the sacrificial system was not productive, though the laws were not productive, Jesus 
Jesus said that I am the true vine and I produce the fruit of salvation. And so here it is. Jesus said that I am authentic. I'm the real thing. The more we become connected to him, the more authentic we become. Then he says, my father is the vine. Just Jesus said I am the true vine. Which literally means Jesus says that I embody the will and purpose of God. He says that I am, I am God's purpose and I am his will. And so in order for us to have strength on our journey, we must be connected to the source and we must not lose our connection. Here it is. He's the saving source when we are lost. He's the nutritious source when we are malnourished. He's the forgiving source when we have faults and failures. He is the delivering source when we are deep in despair. He's the loving source when we are so unlovable. He's the revitalizing source when our spirit is weak and flesh is strong. He is a strengthening source when we are so weak. His name is Jesus and he's the true vine. He gives power to the powerless. He gives food to the hungry. He gives shelter to the shelterless. He gives peace to the peaceless. God, Jesus is all that we need. But then he says this right here and then I'm done. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. So I gotta be connected to the source. Jesus is the source, but I gotta understand who the vine dresser is. The vine dresser is the one who keeps the garden. The vine dresser is the one who takes care of the vine. The vine dresser is the one who protects the vine. The vine dresser is the one that causes the vines to grow. Yes, Jesus is the true vine, but the, the, the vine cannot grow separate and apart from the vine dresser. So the vine dresser is the one who goes out to the, to the field to take care of the vine. And, and there's two things that I want to show you this morning that if you're going to grow, God has to put you through a process, number one, of pruning. And then he says to those who are not productive, he cuts away. Look at verse number verse number one. He says, I'm the true vine, my father's vine dresser. Verse number two, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Matter of fact, I believe one translation says he cuts them off. Uh, and every branch that bears fruit, notice this, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. So either way, my brothers and sisters, God has to do some cutting in order for things to grow. If you are not productive, he cuts you away. If you are productive, he cuts you so that you can bear more fruit. He prunes you. He knows where to cut you. He knows who to cut out of your life. He knows what to cut out of your life. He knows what things to take out of your emotional condition. He knows what to take off of your mind. He knows what to, he knows what to cut away from you so that you can grow. But here is the main point. If you're not producing fruit, then God can't prove you. And if he can't prove you, he will cut you off from the tree. I pray that we have a church of believers and people of God who are productive in moments like this, that God doesn't cut you off. He simply proves on you. He cuts you. He cuts some people out of your life. He cuts some family members out your life. He cuts some church members out your church. He cuts some people so that you can grow. The only way you're going to grow is if God prunes your Life. He said that if you're gonna bear more fruit, I like the I like the uh the progression in the text. He said that they bear fruit to bear more fruit to bear much fruit. Brothers and sisters, I'm done now. But I want to leave you with this: that this pandemic is here for a reason. And I, I know where it started, but I tell you. If God wanted to, he could come down and shut all this stuff down. He could, he could, he could put in the mind of the doctors to find a cure. God is just that powerful. But it is my honest belief that God is allowing this to happen continuously so that the people of God can rise up. Matter of fact, when you look all through social media, there are people praying and having church. There are people who are drawing closer to God. Though, the, though they may not have met their miracle, though they may not uh -huh, have their healing, they're still looking to God. And so here it is. God is trying to develop a nation of people who will look to God 
in circumstances like these who will look to God in trying times, who will look to God in hard times, who's not concerned about everybody else and everything else. Their only concern is God. But here it is. God has to prune some stuff so that he can make us more, more productive. We thank God for this opportunity to share the word of God with you. But I want you who are watching and even sitting in this building to be productive through this. Some folks say, well, how can I be productive when I'm locked at home? Spend time with your family. And, 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 and if there's a difference between just sitting there looking at each other and actually talking about something that matters. Because when you start talking about things that matter, you get to know a person's emotional condition. Matter of fact, you get to learn their behavior. You get to see their uh -huh, facial expressions. You get to learn different things about them. When we were children growing up, one thing that we always did, uh, that one day I pray to do, is that we all sat around the table uh, for dinner. Uh, we didn't go to our rooms, we didn't get a, we didn't go in the rooms, and we definitely didn't close and lock no doors. Uh, but one thing we did do, uh, at least four times a week, we sat around the table, <clears throat> and everybody had to talk about that day. What happened today? And so in moments like this, it's good for us to sit around each other and just talk to each other. Turn the TV off, get off Facebook, uh, get off social media, and spend time with your family. Family is the most important thing that we have as human beings. Matter of fact, before, before the church was even mentioned in scripture, family was mentioned. So take this moment to be productive with your family. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you've given us to listen to your word, Father, to also commune, Father, and send up songs of praise. Father, we thank you, and we pray for those who are in need of you, God, just a touch from you, Father. We pray for those Oh God, who are contemplating on giving, giving their life to you, Father, we ask that you would lead them uh, in the right direction, Father. We thank you so much for this opportunity. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. And so, as we get ready to go down from this place, I want to leave you with this. If there are those out there who are considering uh, a relation, covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is give us a call, and we will make it we will make it available to you to start your relationship with God uh, on today. We thank you. We love you. See you on Wednesday.